brought this on yourself. It hurts me. Hey, welcome back Screen Crush. I'm Ryan Airy and a new trailer for Echo just dropped. So we're going to watch this together. We're going to do reactions. I'm going to like kind of break it down as we go. Then I'm going to bring on our friend Colton Ogburn, get his thoughts on the trailer. But first, I just want to say like Echo is one of these weird shows for me where it's a new thing for Marvel, right? Marvel has never done an all in one drop day drop before. And when they announced that, I was like, well, I bet that show is going to be terrible because it's the kind of thing you would do if you didn't have faith in your show. The thing is like every Disney Plus show kind of bucked this trend, like Netflix drop everything in one day. And Disney Plus, starting with The Mandalorian, gave us this great like weekly thing where an episode would drop. We'd get to ruminate on it, talk about it, make videos about it. So when they announced they were doing Echo in one day, I had two thoughts. My first thought was, gee, I hope they don't keep doing that because then I will, you know, have fewer videos to make. But B, I thought, you know, it, it just doesn't speak to a lot of faith in the series. They actually sent screeners out to us today. And I have seen the first episode of Echo. They sent us the first three. So typically what I like to do is like, uh, watch a, watch the episode, write the scripts, so I get the theories out and do, then do the next one. And we're doing like each episode individually instead of all at once. So I've only watched the first episode and I really, really like it. Like some of the acting's a little wooden in places. Um, I can't give like a full review of it because there's like an embargo until Monday, but I will say I'm enjoying it so far. Now I have not watched this trailer yet. Uh, I'm going to watch it with you guys, but then bring on Colton to talk about it. I might be super annoying and like stop a few times and point some things out. I will not give any spoilers for the first episode. Uh, spoiler free zone here. I'm really just kind of reacting to what I'm seeing. Might talk about Daredevil, the TV show and Hawkeye and stuff like that, which I assume you've seen. We are rolling and we are going to go three, two, one now. When I was a boy, I had to choose a path uh, or fate okay. would choose for me. Right now, okay, right off the bat, right? If you haven't seen the uh, the Daredevil Netflix series, I think every season's like three episodes too long. Hello, Artemis. This is Artemis, the business cat. Um, it's, it's so brilliant. I actually think Wilson Fisk is the one of, if not the best villain in the MCU. This is all flashbacks from an episode where you see his origin story and the first time he killed. It's just so good. In fact, we did a video about it, a Kingpin Was Right video, where I compared, of all people, Wilson Fisk to Will Smith. Uh, you should check it out. But... I'm also excited. It's going to be M.A. Like, I know they're doing an R-rated uh, an, an R -rated Deadpool 3, but like, M.A. <laughs> like, this is going to be insane. I've hurt people, and I'm going to hurt more. Ah, oh, it's so well done. You embarrassed me in front of her! I'm asking forgiveness for what I'm about to do. Savages. Gang wars. The city. Awesome. I love how they're doing this. It's like they have this whole corner of the Marvel universe that they're just starting to like carve out. Marvel did something similar to this in the 90s. They had um, all their different families of titles like X-Men and Spider-Man. Then they started to do the Midnight Suns. They took it a little bit too far. They made too many books. But in the late 90s, they started an imprint called Marvel Knights that focused on like these street heroes like Daredevil, um, Punisher, and it gave them like their own sort of corner of the MCU. Also around the time, they started a, a series called Max that was like no comics code, curse words. You could watch Nick Fury have sex with a lot of women. I will neither confirm nor deny the facts of that story. And notice how they're doing it here. They're starting with Daredevil. They're like showing us all the scenes from Daredevil about Kingpin, then with him. By the way, I love the gritty color grading they did here, showing it in black and white, but Daredevil is like blood red, looks so good. Now it's taken us up to Hawkeye, kind of mentally connecting the dots between all of these different shows to say, hey, this is a different corner. This is like going to get ugly and it's going to get brutal. Maya, we are the only ones we can trust. Okay, so I don't know how much you guys remember Hawkeye, right? I thought Hawkeye was an underrated show at the time. I thought it should have been like a movie. I was surprised like when I read The Raid of Marvel Studios, uh, the book that like it was considered to be a movie. They thought it'd be better as a show. I thought Alakwa Cox was great at it. I thought that her character was definitely, if I'm going to watch a spinoff of somebody who's not Kate Bishop, it was going to be her. I, I do think it was a bad introduction to the MCU proper for the Kingpin. Because remember, like 
the Netflix shows were supposed to be part of the MCU, but that was at a time when the movies ignored the television because it was made by like a different arm of the company. So now everything's under one specific arm and they're actually embracing elements from the Netflix TV series that I'm really into. But you got to think like having the Kingpin show up in the MCU in his Hawaiian shirt from the family business comic and having him like weirdly have super, it just wasn't like, it's kind of like Kang, right? Kang showed up, he got beat. He's like 0 for 1 or 0 for 2 at this point. Same thing with Kingpin. The first time he showed up should have been him winning. And I don't know how the series is going to end. Presumably it's going to flow into the next, like the Daredevil Born Again rebooted series they're doing. But I think Kingpin needs to win in this, right? Like Kingpin needs a serious win to show that he is a badass, a force to be reckoned with. So here we Betrayal. go to the Echo part. That's not something that I can forgive. We trailed because remember she shot him. Oh, so good. Nothing about this brings me joy. You brought this on yourself. And also this wall, we got a video coming out really soon where we talk about like Kingpin's history, but a blank white wall with some cracks in it is really important to like young Wilson Fisk's psyche. And it's going to be interesting to see how much of like things like this they're taking from the Daredevil series. Like in other words, how much of the Daredevil series is canon? And if the Daredevil series is canon, does that mean the Defenders is, which means Iron Fist and some of these other things that Netflix put out that maybe they'd like to revamp? Personally, hoping for Luke Cage season three. Ah, my man, we're gonna rewind. Look at Daredevil real quick. I will say, um, I'm not gonna give spoilers. I think you're gonna like it. That's all I'm gonna say. Ah! I just... I have to kill you. I'm so excited. Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th. Set your Disney Plus profile to... I still hate, I capital H hate that they're dropping in one day though. Can't stand that. But person, why are you so excited about this show? Well, okay. Like I've been reading comics for my entire life, like, but I'd always read Silver Age, Justice League, Secret Wars, Fantastic Four. The first trade paperback that I ever bought, like of a comic book that I couldn't buy at the local drugstore was a run of Frank Miller's Daredevil that like started with him fighting Bullseye, his first fight with Kingpin, like when Kingpin was introduced as a Daredevil villain. It, it, it blew my mind because, and I was like 11 at the time, right? Because I had never even had a conception that comics could be that dark, that realistic, and Frank Miller, I mean, the work he did in the 80s is legendary. I don't, need, I don't need to explain it. He laid the groundwork for some of his own projects like Sin City, but also just a myriad of other co comic book creators who have been able to bring that dark grittiness of indie underground comics and bring it into mainstream superhero comics. And now the MCU is doing that. I, I, I felt this way the first time I saw like the first trailer for the Netflix Daredevil show. I was like, oh my God, they're... They're really doing it. They're doing Frank Miller Daredevil. They're putting Turk in. They're doing all these like little tiny Frank Miller things that I just loved. And now we're getting to see that in Echo. Uh, Colton, what do you think? What were your thoughts on this trailer and, and like kind of where you think Echo is going to fit into this canon of, of Daredevil, Daredevil Netflix shows? Well, I, I'm just so excited. I, I'm with you on when that first season of Daredevil came out. It It was so different compared to what we were getting from the MCU at the time and not to disrespect what we were getting at the time but it was just dark it was gritty it was real like you said it, it had that you know that Miller feeling to it and so when they announced that they were bringing uh, Charlie Cox Daredevil in uh, Vincent D'Onofrio Kingpin into the MCU like officially because it always kind of existed like on this like parallel line like yeah it's kind of in it it's kind of not there was a lot of discussion of whether or not this version, like the version we saw in She-Hulk, the version we saw in Hawkeye, were they the exact same versions of the characters from Netflix or was mm -hmm. it kind of something different? So I've always been hopeful, just canonize, canonize the Daredevil series. Mm -hmm. It's so great. And I think this teaser confirmed that because they are showing actual footage from Daredevil. They're showing the flashbacks of Kingpin as a child so I, I'm glad that they're really pushing, hey, we've got this awesome Daredevil show that we acquired and like actually put on Disney+. Plus. It's like that show is getting its second win. You pointed out to me the other day that it's 10 years old now, I think the first season, which is Yeah, insane. season one dropped. Season one dropped in 2013, yeah. If you haven't watched Daredevil, please watch it. And yeah, this trailer got me... Th this is the most excited I've been for Echo. And I, I hate that like... 
that it's supposed to be the Echo Show, but I'm kind of like excited that it's the Kingpin Show. But I really hope that the fact that Kingpin is in it, Daredevil's in it, I hope that that brings an audience in and then we can also fall in love with the echo character i hope that it has that same feel as the daredevil show did and from this trailer it certainly does yeah and with with daredevil netflix the only thing i was ever disappointed in about that show apart from like you know some it went on too long etc etc like the seasons were too long was i expected greater ties to the mcu like i kind of envisioned a scene where Daredevil was beating the hell out of some punk in an alley and Iron Man flew by, completely oblivious to what was going on beneath him. You know, I wanted those kind of connections. And now we're on Disney Plus. Spider-Man and Daredevil have met in the movies. It's canonized, baby. Like, we're going to start seeing these crossovers happen in ways that we never, ever could have dreamed of before. Um, I kind of did a run through of the trailer. I just stopped here and there, pointed out some things that I noticed. Uh, I wanted to just more give like my raw reaction. Are there any like cool Easter eggs that you noticed in this in this video you want to point out to us? Yes, I noticed a few and you, you may have spotted these, but I noticed uh, the white wall. There, there was just a quick frame where there was this white wall being like beaten on. Did you catch that one? I did. I briefly mentioned it and all I told uh, everybody was, hey, white walls are important. Watch Daredevil. Yes, so like we've talked about the, the that painting that Kingpin is obsessed with in the first season. Um, I, I loved that in this trailer they tied that because uh, for those of you that don't know, it, in his childhood, his father was very abusive, made him stare at this white wall. That's why he is obsessed with this painting that looks like a white wall. Um, so getting to see that white wall in this trailer getting beat on, I, I'm wondering if that's Kingpin busting through. That, that'll be really cool to see. Uh, the other thing I noticed was, okay, so we know that in the comics, Maya shoots Kingpin in both eyes, I believe, and he goes blind. Mm -hmm. In the trailers we've seen for this, he is wearing an eye patch, implying that maybe they just shot the one eye. But I yeah. noticed the frame in, uh, in this trailer where you can see him yelling and I'm, I'm guessing at Maya, and he has like scarring around his eye, but no eye patch. So I, I'm wondering what's going on there. Are they just going to say that she just missed him point blank and it just like skirted along the side of his face? I, I just thought that was an interesting thing that he, he seemed, this seems to be post him getting shot in the eye. And it seems like they may be retconning that because they don't want him wearing an eye patch, I guess, for the remainder of whenever he shows up. Yeah, in the comics, it was this whole thing where Daredevil, you know, Daredevil and Kingpin were now both blind at the same time. Uh, they're obviously going a different way with it, but you're right. Like in the trailers, he is at least wearing an eye patch, or and in the comics, though, he, he is fully blinded. I, you know, maybe it's all tied into how he was strong enough to rip off a car door in Hawkeye. Maybe we'll get an explanation of how the hell that could actually happen. Yeah, it could be tied to, I don't know, if he got super soldier serum or something. I, I, I'd love to see a, a kingpin that is, you know, just completely juiced out like Bane. That, that would be interesting to see. <laughs> uh, but there is something cool about how grounded the, the Netflix series was. So I, I hope they don't go too... Uh, you know, fantastical, but then again, mm -hmm. they are like officially in the MCU now. The, the last little thing I caught, there was a still, there was this quick little flash where you can see what looks like Kingpin's hand as an adult grabbing a hammer. And, you know, earlier in the trailer, we got the flashback to when he uses a hammer to kill his father. So I don't know what's going on there. I don't know who he's about to mess up with this hammer, but I, I also caught that and wanted to mention it. I, it could have something to do with the fact you know, he was traumatized as a child. He had an abusive childhood. Maya, I think we're going to learn a lot about her childhood in this uh, season and, you know, how he maybe didn't, like, directly abuse her. Like, you know, if you're somebody on the outside looking in, you might not see him yelling at her or hitting her, but he was definitely manipulating her. So I think that hammer could be like some imagery there teasing what's to come with their relationship. Well, I'm so excited. Like I said, I haven't seen episodes two, three, four, and five yet, but after one, I'm invested. That's all That's all I'll say. Um, Colton, by the way, is the guy who is trapped eternally in our tiny television, but he does not know it, so please don't tell him. And you can find his Twitter uh, link below, mine as well. Please, guys, tell us what you think about this down in the comments. Are you excited about Echo? Do you think this is going to, like, continue the Marvel streak of good Disney Plus shows? Was Secret Invasion just a one-off? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.